What's everyone saying? It's your boy Summon Explores back again. I'm here today at London Liverpool Street and in today's video I'm gonna be doing an episode of what I like to call Trip v Trip. Well, it's the name I've decided, I don't know why. But today we're gonna be heading between London Liverpool Street and Chesant, comparing Greater Anglia to the London Overground. And you're gonna be joining me. Liverpool Street is London's and the UK's fourth busiest railway station served by a multitude of operators including Greater Anglia services out to places like Norwich, Cambridge and Southend, Stansted Express, London Overground to Chesham and Enfield, the occasional C2C to Southend, four London Underground lines and the Elizabeth line. The station is a busy one and is the gateway to Essex and West and East Anglia. Travelling up to Chesham, we'll be heading by Greater Anglia. Trains to Chesham are operated by their five-car Class 720 Aventra sets, which are the successors to Bombardier's Electrostar family of traction. Stansted Express's Class 745 Flirt trains, built by Stadler, also add a cheeky stop here and there on their way to and from Stansted Airport during the peak hours. The journey up to Chesham will take about 19 minutes, and our train will terminate at Cambridge North, with other Greater Anglia services such as those to Bishop Stortford, or Hartford East, taking up to 26 minutes. Up to six trains per hour stop between the two stations in each direction during peak hours and up to four per hour during off-peak hours. As we leave Liverpool Street, we pass through Shoreditch and Bethnal Green as we diverge off the route towards Stratford. Through Hackney Downs and Clapton. Into the Lee Valley Park through Walthamstow Marshes to our first stop, Tottenham Hale, which provides interchanges to the London Underground Victoria Line. The Class 720s were introduced to Great Anglia in November 2020, replacing most of the operator's former stock like the Class 317s and Class 321s. I have to say, I think these trains are very smart, they're nice and bright and have amazing audiovisual information screens on board that show next stops, facilities on board the train, space if there's any seats left and live travel information. The trains are fitted with air conditioning, plug points, accessible areas for wheelchairs and bike storage facilities too. I would say that their downfall is probably the seating. The 3 by 2 seating, the thing of nightmares, I swear to you. It's like these trains are made for you to feel self-conscious as you shuffle between the seats, bumping into the handles and all the people sitting down. Other than that, they do the job well, except if it's your unlucky day and you get one of these for a trip up to Stansted. Leaving Tottenham Hell, if you want to see some tube trains out in the open, sit to the right and look out for Northumberland Park Depot which I somehow missed, where you might be able to spot some Victoria Line tube trains here and there. Nearby is Meridian Water, which is home to one of North London's biggest regeneration projects, where we then whisk past Angel Road, which is London's most recently closed railway station. Our train speeds through Edmonton, Brimsdown and Enfield as we travel along the A1055,
And as we pass Waltham Cross, we leave the boundaries of Greater London and head into deepest, darkest Hertfordshire. We are now approaching Chesant. 19 minutes later, we arrive into Chesant. Chesant Station is approximately half a mile away from the town and is well served by commuter traffic, being right on the edge of travel card zone boundaries in Zone 8. Nearby there's a nice little YHA hostel and a young mariner's base, and through this car park, or one of the numerous paths around, there's easy access into the Lee Valley Country Park which runs all the way from East and North London up to here, Hertfordshire. All of that aside, I think I'll head a couple of days into the future where we head back down on the other method of travel, the London Overground. Well, so I've returned back to Chesham Station and yeah, we're going to be heading back into London Liverpool Street on the London Overground. My train is actually in eight minutes. So we're just going to go up here, across the crossing, wait for our train to pull in and get off. Oh my gosh, of course, the barriers go up as soon as I come up. Come on, lads. Oh gosh. Of course, make sure you don't be crossing when the lights are going. We're going to be sensible people and go up here. <laughs> London Overground services operated by Arriva for Transport for London run through to London Liverpool Street via Seven Sisters rather than Tottenham Hale. But sometimes they are actually supplemented by Great Anglia trains in that direction whenever there is disruption or engineering works. Ello also operate a fleet of Bombardier Ventures, the four car class 710s, of which a number of them are dual voltage. The journey down to Liverpool Street will take around 39 minutes, stopping at a number of stations on the way down. Some early morning services go speed mode and direct to Chesant, like the 0448 service from Liverpool Street, which only takes 21 minutes to get up here. All day, the service runs every 30 minutes to and from Chesant, being a branch line of the core route, with the other branch heading out to Enfield Town. The first difference you spot compared to Great Anglia trains is longitudinal seating, also seen on other TFL services like the London Underground. This increases standing capacity and is, is more conducive to effective transportation of large crowds of people, notably commuters. It gives the train an open and airy feel compared to Great Anglia trains, but the one thing is, if you're quite tall, you need to duck quite a bit when walking down the train to not hit the lovely grab handles dangling from the ceiling. Also, these trains don't have toilets or bike storages like the ones on Great Anglia. I would say that the Overground's audiovisual announcements are much simpler and clearer than Great Anglia's, but I do appreciate GA's information about ETAs, available seats, whether I can bust a doo-doo in the toilet, and other stuff like that, stuff that you don't get on the Overground. As we leave, it's also worth noting that before 2015, this route was also operated by Great Anglia, but since it's had a bit of a spruce up, a bit of a glow up with new trains and some station upgrades as well. The first stop is Theobald's Grove, which serves part of Waltham Cross and Waltham Abbey. Even though the stops are not too far apart, the trains here get to a good level of speed. Occasionally you get a cheeky side to side shake when crossing junctions or travelling along curves of track. And on this line we travel through the depths of Enfield, converging with the Enfield Town branch just before Edmonton Green, which occasionally gets Great Anglia services as well. Silver Street. This is the train to 
soon after, we're traveling through Tottenham, which provides nice views across the area, but the sh down the lane blocks off the views with their, to be fair, seemingly impressive stadium. Come on, Chelsea. Come on, Chelsea. Seven Sisters links the overground with the Victoria Line, and here our busy train becomes empty. We also stop at Hipster Central, Hackney Downs, where we join up with the Great Anglia trains and share our way down into London Liverpool Street. In my opinion, I think for convenience, the plug sockets and the toilet, I'd take the Great Anglia train over the London Overground. The journeys both cost the same, whichever direction, whichever method you take, but they have the different journey times. However, I found that Great Anglia seems to just go wrong more often you know because the line is dotted with level crossings and people just don't know how to drive their cars properly you know mixed with the longer line you know you've got trains going up to cambridge stansted all those places and then that means you've got a mix of stopper and express services it's it's a recipe for disaster but to be fair there's no real difference if you're just wanting to connect with the victoria line on your way into central london it's up to you what do you guys think i want to see you comment down below you know what what would you take overground or great anglia if you like the video make sure you drop a like subscribe support your boy on the patreon on the ko-fi links in the description Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, all that stuff. Subscribe, um, leave a comment, you know, um, eat a sandwich. Um, I don't know, anything, anything you want to do to support the channel. Thanks for watching. It's been your boy, Someone Explores. Hope to see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Come on, Chelsea. Come on, Chelsea.